And Ya'juj is a tribe. And Ya'juj is another tribe. But they are related. And they are actual human beings. Ya'juj and Ma'juj are human beings. They are tribes that actually exist on earth. They existed close to the time of Musa alayhi salam in an era of a great, great king named Dhul Qarnayn. He had so much power, so much authority that his kingdom reached almost the whole world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Dhul Qarnayn in Surah Al-Kahf. He said he found people there that were very primitive in speech. So he said, oh, Dhul Qarnayn, Ya'juj and Ma'juj are very corruptive on earth. They kill, they take, they steal, they do all these things. Can we give you some help, bring you some people, so that we can help you to make a, a barrier, a barrier between us and them, so that they can't come to us, and they can be cut off from the world. Then Dhul Qarnayn replies, he said, Allah has already given me enough power, I don't need your help. Thank you for offering. But what I want you to help me with is just a little bit of, may, of starting off the foundations of the wall. I'll make between you and them a wall. So the whole idea here, Allah is telling us that he built a wall or a barrier or a dam, something that was so strong, so impermeable, that nothing can reach and nothing can come, nothing can break it down anymore. No climate, no people, no weaponry, nothing. And when Dhul Qarnayn looked at the people, they looked at this wall and they said, wow, this is a very strong wall. And Dhul Qarnayn wanted to teach them a lesson. Finally, he said, Qala hadha rahmatun min Rabbi. This is a mercy from your Lord for now. But when the promise of my Lord has arrived, Allah has decreed something that's going to happen. Allah will make this wall destroyed. He will destroy it. Dakka, meaning it will be level with the ground. The promise of my Lord is truly going to come, no doubt. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Sahihain, in Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam woke up one afternoon, very frightened, or very concerned, sorry. Fazi'an, like he was, he was concerned, shocked. And he said, La ilaha illallah, out of shock. Woe to the Arabs from a bad thing that has come very near. Today, the wall of Ya'juj and Majuj has been opened as much as this. And he made a ring with his fingers. He said, this much has been passed through the wall of Ya'juj and Majuj. Now, what does this mean? Does that mean that Ya'juj and Majuj has, have, have already pecked through the wall since that time? Allahu A'lam. What it means though is that it is close. How are they breaking through? Allahu A'lam. How much of it is actually now open? Allahu A'lam. But the point is, when it's finally opened, and Ya'juj and Ma'juj are able to come out, it'll be the time when Allah has decreed, and they will come out. And this is the way it will happen when the day comes. First of all, Ya'juj and Ma'juj are unable to get out of there. Number one, there are many reasons why. Number one, as we said before, they are a very primitive people. Their understanding of technology is not like ours. They don't know what's going on in the world right now. They don't, they don't have computers, they don't have airplanes, they don't have these weaponry we have. They have nothing. Nor, and they are between mountains. These mountains are covered with so, such bad climate that if they try to go up these mountains, they'll die. So they can't go around or on top of this wall. And some people, they describe them as being short. You know, they're, they're, like, they're like really, they're like midgets walking around. Oh, and they've got these strange eyes and this is all rubbish you know there's nothing in the hadith that states that they are like that and when they come out they just destroy they destroy rob rape kill murder all of these things and they just worry about they just they, they want to be the leaders of the world they want to be the power but in a very you know they're like gangsters but the worst of gangsters like thugs the worst of thugs ever ever seen ever known the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam tells us these Ya'juj and Ma'juj will come out in a time where Isa alayhi salam has already descended. Isa alayhi salam will be among us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send Jibreel alayhi salam to Isa to tell him alayhi salam that a certain type of servants of mine, meaning creations of mine, have now been released. Allah is talking about Ya'juj and Ma'juj. So take my servants, meaning take the Muslims, 
O Isa السلام, take them to the mountains and hide. You will not be able to beat them. They are too many. They are so many, my dear brothers and sisters, that the Prophet وسلم, once, I want you to listen to this, he sat down with his companions and said, for every one person that enters paradise, 999 will enter hellfire. Uh, that's, that's frightening. It means like, do we have any chance for every one person, 999 enters par- hellfire? So the Sahabas were concerned and they asked him, Ya Rasulullah, Ithan, therefore none of us will enter paradise, baby. Who's going to enter it? He said, don't worry. From your nation, meaning from, from my nation, just from the Muslims that ever exist, from the time of Muhammad Sallallahu until the end of time, just from the Muslim nation, not from the world, from the Muslim nation, from every one of you, there is 999 of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. They are 999 folds more than the nation of Muhammad وسلم, that exists. So if we are you know, now, let's say, a billion or just over a billion, how many would that make Ya'juj and Ma'juj currently in population? Okay, you need good mathematicians to calculate that. So they are a large amount. Let's listen to the remainder of the hadith. And he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, فَيَمُرُّ أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَىٰ بُحَيْرَ الطَّبَرِيَّةِ They will pass by the ocean or the sea of Tabariya. It is close to Asham, to Syria. بُحَيْرَ الطَّبَرِيَّةِ And where Jordan is in Syria, in that area. They will come past بُحَيْرَ الطَّبَرِيَّةِ And what happens there? فَيَشْرَبُونَ مَا فِيهَا They will drink every bit of water that's in it. وَيَمُرُّ آخِرُهُمْ now they're coming, you know, like group after group, yeah, because there's a large amount of them. So the first amount of them will drink it all. And then either in the same day or a few days later, the other group is still coming. And they'll come to the same Buhaira, this little sea, and they won't find any water in it. It's, they drank it all. They will say, we think that there was once upon a time water here. Okay, this indicates that they are phenomenally large population. He said, Isa Salam and his companions will be imprisoned. Imprisoned meaning they'll be restricted to the mountains. We will have no, no way to get to food. Then Isa السلام, and his companions will start supplicating to them, make dua to Allah because they'll be in such a hard time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond to the dua of Isa السلام, and his companions and he will send a disease, a worm. Naghaf is a worm, type of worm or a type of parasite that will come out of the necks of the Ajuj and Ma'juj as a disease. It'll, it'll be in their necks. That's where it'll the disease will be situated. And then they will all look like as if they have been killed all at once. Like you're in a battle and they'll be killed all at once. They'll all die wherever they are on earth. Then Isa alayhi salam and his companions will be told to come down. How will they be told? Isa alayhi salam will send a man. He'll say, who of you will volunteer to go down and check if your ajuj and ajuj are dead or still alive? But if you go down, it means you're sacrificing yourself. If they're alive, they're going to kill you. So one man will go down and find that they're all dead and they will tell Isa alayhi salam and then Isa alayhi salam this will be a cause for him and his companions to descend from the mountains and come back on earth to eat and drink and live. Then Isa alayhi salam and his companions will ask Allah again to remove these people from there. So then Allah sends طَيْرًا كَأَعْنَاقِ bukht. He will send birds that have necks like the necks of vultures. فَتَحْمِلُهُمْ It will carry their bodies. And this indicates to us that either their bodies are small in build or that they would have decayed, you know, decomposed to the point where they become light. And they throw their bodies places where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills for them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends rain and it fertilizes the land and their stench is gone. This is Ya'juj and Ma'juj. What's the wisdom behind it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, but they are one of the major signs that the end of the world has come very, very near.